One almost can't be any later with a review than I am, but I do have my reasons for that. Unfortunately, those aren't technical, but rather health-related ones. October really didn't go too well for me, nothing went according to plan. I had to fight a really nasty flu, which was followed by one or the other complication, of which I don't want to talk about right now, since we here on this channel aren't into medicine or doctor stuff, but rather into tech. So finally, I'm actually going to take a closer look at the cheapest one yet of the AMD Ryzen 3000 series processors. To be exact, it's an APU that carries the name Ryzen 3 3200G. So yep, featuring integrated graphics, as the G at the end already gives away. This happens to be the not-so-spectacular 4-core 4 4-thread 4 processor, so right away you shouldn't be expecting anything crazy performance-wise. At a price of about 95 US dollars right now, you really shouldn't. This APU probably should not not go into gaming PCs, but rather HTPCs or the likes, where lower performance is okay. Understandably, I will carry out the tests of the 3200G with its integrated graphics unit, but to satisfy my curiosity I want to see how well the CPU part does in theory when combining it with an overkill graphics card. We'll then find out how much of a bottleneck this processor is to the discrete GPU. Included is one not so spectacular stock cooler. This is the so called Wraith Stealth, which doesn't come with a whole lot of aluminum. Paired with the 6 core 12 thread CPU named Ryzen 5 3600, this Wraith Stealth doesn't really do that good of a job, but in today's case, we shouldn't be running into any cooling issues whatsoever. That I can confirm 100% right away. The noise levels are decent too. Now, since I'm not swimming in AIM4 motherboards that I can use for testing, I have to grab what I have, and that's why I'm once again using my trusty overkill ASRock X570 Tai Chi board. Pairing such an APU with a behemoth of a board like this one sure is close to insane, but you know my reasons by now. Normally you'd pair such a processor with cheaper, more affordable boards equipped with either A320, B350 or B450 chipsets. Now before I move on, I'd like to get one thing straight, since understandably there still is some confusion when it comes to these APUs of the 3000 series. While those new Ryzen 5, 7 and 9 CPUs are based on the new Zen 2 architecture, AMD's APUs mostly are one generation, thus architecture behind. The two APUs 3200G and 3400G therefore are not Zen 2 based models with 7 nanometer manufacturing process, but instead Zen Plus with the 12 nanometer process of the yesteryear 2018, which also means that they're there's no sign of Navi graphics yet, we still get Vega graphics on here. So huge performance leaps we saw with Zen Plus 2 Zen 2, you cannot expect those here. Since many will want to know, let's take a look at the clock speeds. This time around only with the included cooling solution, since I for some reason forgot to do comparisons with a more powerful CPU cooler. So with all cores at full load, in my case I get to 3.829 GHz at max, but mostly in the range of 3. 3.779 GHz. When sending just a single core to do hard work, I get to see 3.879 GHz at the very max. In game and Shadow of the Tomb Raider, paired with a GTX 1080 Ti, however, on average I'm hovering around the 3.825 GHz mark. And as you can see, we partially run into some nasty lags, or rather, unpleasant micro stuttering due to the not so good 1% low values. When putting load onto the integrated Vega 8 graphics unit, the GPU clocks to about 1240 MHz for me. But enough of MHz here, Gigahertz there, motherboard, and so on, let's finally talk about benchmarks. Because this time around, the results don't necessarily look too good. Now, in order not to confuse any of you, Watching, I'm letting you know once again, the first tests will be the theoretical ones, where I pair the 3200G up with the quite powerful GTX 1080 Ti graphics card. I'm doing that to show you guys what kind of raw performance you can expect out of the CPU part alone. Following that, I'll throw the 1080 Ti out of my test system and will present you the performance data, the graphics performance of the bare APU, so only with the integrated Vega graphics. Because honestly, it's more realistic to use such an APU without any discrete GPU. But enough rambling, take a look at the results.
Well, where should I start? What I basically can say is, for $95, we definitely are not getting garbage here, even though that greatly depends on what you have in mind to use the APU for. So it comes down to the individual person and its use cases. For some, understandably, such an APU might be completely unusable. For others, on the other hand, it's a godsend, exactly what they need. Of course, my theoretical test with a GTX 1080 Ti is super unrealistic. No one should seriously purchase purchase a CPU costing less than $100 and pair it up with a graphics card costing 5, 4 or 6 times as much as the processor. Ok, to be fair, given the not so super duper great 1% lows, the minimum FPS, we could already be facing some issues with a $250 or $300 GPU. Well, it depends on how well you personally can and want to handle micro stuttering. Since I haven't really been testing too many low cost entry level CPUs lately, I obviously don't have many processors to compare this 3200G with, which is why I just threw in the Intel Core i3-8100 into the charts. Fair enough, it's actually a CPU that launched back in late 2017, but it still does cost slightly more than today's Ryzen 3 3200G. But then again, when talking about the 3200G as well as the Ryzen 5 3400G, we are in fact actually talking about 2018 tech based on Zen Plus. But I digress. When it comes to pure raw performance in multi-threaded workloads, the 3200G and i3-8100 show us a beautiful battle. One time AMD CPU is on top, then in the next test Intel's and so on and so forth, depending on the applications. When combined with a beefy graphics card, that Intel processor however, compared to the 3200G in games takes a giant leap and pretty much leaves the APU behind it. While in some game time titles, we can somewhat keep up with the Picasso chip, yes that's the APU's codename, we do get decent frame rates, but we certainly need to see the painful truth, very often there are cases in which the 3200G drops behind that i3 by a lot. But then again, this APU doesn't need to do super well, since it only costs $95. However, it's not the average frame rate that makes the biggest impact, it's the 1% lows. Sometimes we do experience very unpleasant micro stuttering. If the 1% low value is too low. The power consumption also doesn't happen to be too spectacular when paired with a discrete GPU. With an entry level Intel CPU, you're consuming slightly less power should you happen to care about the power draw. But in all honesty, the way I'm presenting you guys this CPU or rather APU to be exact, doesn't make too much sense. This is why I of course ran through a separate test parkour without the help of a beefy graphics card. And now we're talking. For $95 you're getting a somewhat halfway decent CPU plus a pretty powerful integrated graphics unit, well at least compared to what Intel is offering right now. That's not bad at all. So when it's all about iGPU versus iGPU, AMD clearly takes the lead. Even though I can't approve that with numbers today for you guys, since time wasn't necessarily on my side. So I couldn't run new tests with Intel's iGPU. And what can you actually do with the Vega 8 graphics and its 8 compute units? Well, it turns out not so much. Even though I did lower the graphics settings drastically, you rarely can expect smooth gameplay at a screen resolution of 1080p. Often your only remedy is to lower the resolution down to 900p or even 720p, both of which are not really 2019 standard. If you're ok with the pixel show though, quite a few AAA titles do run fairly well. And if you're mostly into lighter esports titles such as CSGO and the likes anyway, you should be fine. This is where you could probably even game at 1080p. The power draw for such a CPU plus iGPU combo is pretty decent in my opinion and same can be said about temperatures. The Wraith Stealth definitely is up to the task here. Truthfully, who should actually purchase such an APU? One thing's clear, I personally would not advise you to pair the 3200G up with a discrete graphics card. While opinions will differ on that, I just don't think it would be worth it. Too much of a bottleneck, that's my opinion. For those that want to play AAA 
play game titles at a low cost, most likely should look elsewhere and maybe even save some more cash and pick up something like the slightly more expensive new Ryzen 5 3600, a 2600 from 2018 or maybe even pick up something used. Of course you'll also need a suitable graphics card to pair your CPU with. If you on the other hand plan on putting together a nice HTPC on which you plan to casually edit and render out a couple not too demanding videos, do some light gaming like CSGO and so on and browse the web, for $95 this could very well be a decent overall package. You just have to know what exactly you plan on doing with your system, otherwise you probably should go for those other options I mentioned. So when using the AMD Ryzen 3 3200G for what it actually is intended to be used for, I can definitely recommend picking this APU up. I'm even giving it my gold award. And yeah, big thanks to you guys for watching.